Hello, I'm Jana and welcome to the Crafty Corner. This week, I'm going to be crafting to the theme funky and frilly. Come join us at the Funky Junkie blog to participate in this challenge. The challenge will be running from July 14th through July 27th. For my make this time, I'm going to be using a couple of the brand new Tim Holtz Sizzix dies. I am in love with this butterfly and we're going to have some fun creating a card with it. So go ahead and pause to find out what other materials we'll need for this demonstration. All right, let's head over to the crafty corner. For the theme, funky and frilly, I've decided to work with a distress paint resist technique. I've been really curious how the distress paint technique that Tim showed in one of his live demos will work with these fantastic flowers. These are the floral outlines that were just released. These are so pretty, I just had to try the paint resist technique. So for this technique, we're going to need some stamps, a stamping block or a stamping platform, some white media heavy stock, and I'm going to be using some iced spruce distress paint. Also, we're going to want a brayer. So to start with, I'm going to put down my paper and grab the stamps and mount one on the acrylic block. So we'll take this one, we'll place it down here. Now on the media mat corner, I'm just going to pull that over into the screen. I'm going to put down a little bit of distress paint. Just a couple of drops. And with the brayer, I'm going to quickly roll that back and forth. Just like this, getting a nice even coating on the brayer. Then we're going to quickly roll that onto our stamp. And immediately stamp that down on our paper. This will dry pretty fast, so I need to be quick about stamping. Put that down, apply good pressure, and lift. So this is our first stamp using distress paint. I'll set that aside and quickly I'm going to wipe off the stamp because I do not want the distress paint to dry on it. Okay, now I'm going to grab another stamp in that set and we're going to repeat the process. Again, I will get some of the distress paint on the brayer. And this is the Tim Holtz Ranger Brayer. Absolutely love it for this technique. And we'll quickly roll that onto the stamp. Now let's stamp that down over here. And again, apply good pressure. And lift. And there's our second stamp. Nice and crisp. Okay, one more stamp to go. And again, I will quickly wipe this off. And I'll put down a couple more dots of distress paint over here. Add that onto the brayer and put our other stamp onto the acrylic block. Quickly give this another layer of paint. And stamp. Okay, and there's our final stamp. That looks pretty good. So we're gonna set this aside to dry for now. Now for some quick cleanup, I'm going to wipe off the glass media mat and the brayer. The nice thing, while the distress paint is still wet, it comes right off surfaces nice and easy to clean. 
Okay, next we're going to do some embellishing. I absolutely love the new dies that have come out from the Chapter 3 Sizzix release. And today we're going to be playing with a few of those dies. To start with, we're going to be looking at the new 3D butterfly. This is amazing and the detail is even more amazing. This is the new butterfly 3D. The detail here is just fantastic. I die cut this using some of the Tim Holtz metallic cardstock. And now we're going to bring out some more of this detail by adding a little bit of picket fence. To do that, I'm again going to bring out the brayer and we're going to add a very light coat of distress paint along the ridges of this butterfly. So just a couple of little drops on the media mat and we will give that butterfly some more detail. To do this, let's bring the camera down just a little bit closer to see that fantastic detail. So I'm just going to hold the edge of the butterfly and very quickly and lightly brayer on a little bit of picket fence. Okay, just a little bit more on this wing and I think we're good. Okay, and we added just a little bit of picket fence to the raised areas just to bring out a little bit more detail in this butterfly. Absolutely love it. I just cannot get over the fantastic detail. Okay, let's set this aside to dry. Okay, let's move on to the next step in our Distress Paint Resist. It is time to add some Distress Ink. The inks I'm going to be adding today are Picked Raspberry, Abandoned Coral, and Kitsch Flamingo. I'm going to start with the lightest color first and work my way over to the darker colors. So I'm going to be starting with Kitsch Flamingo. Working through the theme of frilly and funky is really fun. It's definitely putting me out of my comfort zone a little bit, and I'm trying some color combinations that I wouldn't normally use. Some of my typical go-to colors in distress are always Chip Sapphire and Mermaid Lagoon. And of course, Salvage Patina is becoming a new favorite. But working in warmer colors and pinks, that's something a little different. So today I'm going to have fun and explore some different color combinations. As I'm putting down the ink, I'm trying to make sure that it is fairly saturated on the page. The more ink I get down, the more noticeable the resist is going to be. Okay, that looks pretty good for Kitsch Flamingo. Let's move on and add some picked raspberry. I'm not really doing any particular order right now. I'm being a little bit random with my color application and that's gonna be completely okay because the idea is to try to get some really good blends going. Okay, let's go and add some of our abandoned coral next. Mmm, that is a really rich color. I have not used abandoned coral in a long time. I have got to remember what a good color this is. So after we have the abandoned coral blended in, I'm going to go back with our lightest color, Kitsch Flamingo, to finish off this blend.
Okay, finishing up our blend with Kitsch Flamingo. As you can see, the paint has been resisting the ink that I've been putting down onto the page. And when we complete the last step, the distress paint is really going to pop. Okay, so the last step for this background is to take a little bit of paper towel and I'm going to mist it with the distress sprayer. And I'm going to carefully wipe off the ink that is resting on top of the distress paint. Once we remove that ink, the background is really going to pop. So just quickly swirling this over our background, we're going to lift up some of that ink. That is looking pretty good. The detail in the flowers is really coming through the background. And there we go. There is our Distress Paint Resist background. And I think I'm going to add just a few droplets of water. Okay, let's give this a quick dry and set it aside. There we go, our finished background. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Now with our two pieces with paint nice and dry, let's start embellishing our card. To start with, I'm going to be using a small snippet of some of the Tim Holtz Ideology Backgrounds Set 1. I really like this particular set. I like how the little vines are twisting through here with the little flower petals and it matches this paper perfectly in colors. So let's add that on. I'm going to put some adhesive on that with an ATG gun. And just to make sure I'm placing this in the right spot, I have a paper doll that I had previously colored using some Distress Reinkers over some Frosted Crystal. So I'm just going to have this placed on here just to make sure my placement on the card is good. And I'll stick that down on my background. Great. Now, I have pre-cut a few die cuts to go on this card for embellishment. I absolutely love adding a little bit of lace to a project. It gives it a different sort of feel. And since we're doing funky and frilly, lace seemed like a good addition. So I already pre-die cut a few pieces and I used this one of the die cuts. This is the Tim Holtz crochet die set by Sizzix. So I'm going to get some collage medium and I'm going to scribble some of that down on the paper. Because the die cut is so fine, I'm just going to smush this on my, with my finger and then add the lace. Now, another way to adhere the fine cut lace would have been to add some double-sided adhesive before die cutting it but I didn't think of that in time today. So we're going to use glue. Just going to line that up and stick it down. While that dries, we're going to flip this over to the other side and I will add some more glue and attach the other piece of lacy trim. Okay, I love how the pattern in our background peeks through the little bits of lace. And the detail on the crochet die is just fantastic. 
I am having lots of fun mixing new and old products today for this card. Now while that's drying, I'm going to take our 3D butterfly and I'm going to alter this just a little bit. I'm going to snip the wings off so that I can place them at an angle on our paper doll. So taking a little bit more collage medium, we're going to add these wings and make a little fairy. About that looks good. And I'll do the same thing with the other wing. The nice thing about die cuts is that you can slice and dice and create all sorts of wonderful ephemera options. Okay. And as you can see, I've spaced them pretty far apart on the back. So having the option to cut these into pieces was really useful. Okay, and I'm going to set that aside while that dries for a moment. And let's trim off the extra lace. Good. While the little paper doll is drying, let's get out our die cuts. Instead of adding a word sticker sentiment, I decided to do some die cutting instead. This is one of the brand new Tim Holtz Sizzix dies from chapter three. This die set is alphanumeric varsity. This is perfect. You might think this is a really sporty die, but we're going to turn this into something a little bit more frilly. In order to set my dies, I have placed them on a sticky grid sheet by Sizzix. This means I can put my dies down and I've got a nice little bit of low tack adhesive so they won't wiggle around when I'm trying to die cut. And now, let's die cut. So with these little die cuts, I'm going to be spelling out the words, thank you. And I need to first take these apart. These come in two different parts. You get a main center and you get a round the edge highlight, which is just awesome. So I'm going to be matching the white pieces to the pink pieces. Like if we take this K, we are going to just put this piece around here, just like that. And we're going to do that for all of these little pieces. All right, I'm gonna put this part on fast forward. Okay, now that we have all of our little pieces put together, it is time to add a little extra embellishment on these. Now, I experimented on one letter already, but if you look really closely, you can see the fantastic stitching in this die. I wanna draw a little bit more attention to that, so I'm going to be taking a white gel pen and I'm going to be marking all of those little stitched pieces. So, let's put this on fast forward. Okay, let's do the last one in real time. I'm just taking the gel pen and making little marks over the top of the small indentations in the die cut. Adding the little bit of extra white makes those little stitch lines pop. I just still cannot get over the fantastic detail of these dies. These are going to be really versatile and fun to craft with. Okay, now that we have our die pieces all 
set, let's bring back in our backdrop. Now, I'm going to add the fairy onto the card and then we'll finish up by putting in our letters. Okay, so we'll take some collage medium and add that on. I'm also going to grab a couple of foam adhesive squares to give the wings a little bit of lift. Okay, and we'll just take the backing off this sticky foam and put our little fairy onto the card. There we go. And I'll just hold that down for a moment while the collage medium adhesives. And we're going to add our lettering off to the side. I'm going to be spelling out the word, thank you. And we're going to go sideways. So again, I'm just going to add on a little bit of collage medium, and then we will stick our die cuts down. Now for the last thing to do, let's add our card to a card base. For card bases, I like to use Nina Simone Stellar White. Here is my finished make for the theme Frilly and Funky. I hope that you'll join us over at the Funky Junkie blog to participate in the Frilly and Funky challenge. It was so much fun getting a chance to use the new Chapter 3 Tim Holtz Sizzix dies. Can't wait to see all of your fantastic makes. And until next time, happy crafting!